After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Okay, welcome to my new game. Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Probably one of the best games ever. When I did Metal Gear Solid 4, I had to make a choice whether or not to do that one or this one. I did 4 because I do like 4 a little bit better than 3, but this game is still so good. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to finally be doing this. Because I've been replaying the big boss games recently just because I'm really excited for Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain. Flying over Pakistan, altitude 30,000 feet. Approaching Soviet airspace. 20 minutes to drop off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Our main parachute. All right. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. This first video is going to be mainly cutscene, and by mainly I mean it's going to be all cutscene. Uh, probably not until the third video are we going to get like actual gameplay, so... That was one of the reasons why I did four before this one. Put out that cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? It's usually in the beginning and ends of Metal Gear games. Approaching release point. Where, um, I love that music. Where the, uh, hey. the cutscenes are kind of ridiculous. So, you know. Only in a Japanese game would we be following the cigar right now. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. On his helmet, you can see the words Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, which is pretty funny. Sunrise. External temperature minus 46 degrees Celsius. I feel like the reason that this game is like turned out so good is just because a lot of people didn't really like 2. So, they kind of tried to make this one as good as possible. Like, 2 isn't a bad game, it's just, it's, it was a little disappointing at the time. I think that's like high altitude, low... Oof, I have no idea. I forget what Halo stands for. I know it's high altitude something. High altitude, low orbit, maybe? Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Oh, I love that song. That little, like, musical bit there was great. If I ever do something that awesome, I want that song to be playing. If I ever jump off a building Jack, and kill myself, that's what's going to be playing. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? <laughs> no, the virtuous mission. Oh, snake. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? Yes, snake. Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well, about two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? 
isn't he that famous rocket scientist? I love how we've already got this kind of like briefing stuff. On April the 12th, 1961, the like they they wasted no time here. We're five minutes in, and immediately we've got a briefing. But there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development to become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story, so why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. We used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our Oops. Hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate-range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missile. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. I feel like sometimes so video games do a better job teaching history than schools do. negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October... The Actually makes it more interesting, too. ...the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so okay, class, now open to page 84, where we're going to talk but about how JFK defused the missile out, crisis. We had to make a deal. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. Well, they so mustn't be that Russians intelligent. Really want. Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. I wonder what he meant by that. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No, <laughs> space rockets. Up. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. I don't know how you can make, like, secret nuclear testing. I, I just don't understand how that happens. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs. I knew he was going to say that. Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. 
Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. And now we actually get like actual cutscenes again. Infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him back to the West. Just like in many other Metal Gear games, you can press R1 at certain points to uh, get a different angle on what you're looking we at. Get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete. We'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. <laughs> Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Not in peace, Walker. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface to air recovery Oh, Fultons. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. Fultons are not a big part of this game, but when I do Peace Walker, they are going to be pretty... <laughs> Pretty frequent. The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours home in time for dinner but if anything goes wrong you'll be eating dinner breakfast and all the rest of your meals in the jungle Oops. That shot was referenced in uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, the very beginning of the game where Snake, uh, I guess reveals himself. Oh, David Hader, if you're not back in Ground Zeroes, I'm gonna miss you so much. And here we get our first codec of the game. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant. Can you even careful, order a snake in a restaurant? A what about you, Major? What should I call you? Mm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. That name this is not surprising at mission. all, considering Hideo Kojima is a really big David Bowie fan. Steve, no trace of your presence. Is that clear? There's tons this of uh, David Bowie references in Metal Gear games. Speciality. In other words... Weapons and but that one's the most obvious. Site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. 
Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. And by that, he means literally he's about to tell us in like five minutes or something like that. am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. <laughs> 